So the main claim that Michael stated was that robotics will ultimately enhance employment opportunities. His justification, his first justification, was as the presence of, robo of robotics in industry grows, overall education will improve. Uh, the word improve is used very ambiguously. Uh, it could also it could possibly mean an improving quality, or as what I believe the intended meaning was, uh, the, the improvement of percentage of people who are actually educated. Uh, although automation and robotics will increase the number of higher skilled jobs that can replace lower skilled jobs, uh, not everyone, uh, not everyone will be fit mentally to actually take on these rigorous positions. So the improvement of education. Uh, it will help, it, it might actually help, but that's more of a, a hasty generalization. In Michael's claim of fact speech, he assumed that people take on low-skilled jobs because they're either lazy or they want to settle, although this, not, this might not be the case for the whole population. Uh, there is really no evidence to support uh, his claim that, uh, that robotic, that uh, the presence of uh, robotics in the industry will improve overall education, and nor was I, nor will, nor was I able to find any evidence of myself. Um, one way automation and robotics can be used to improve the quality of ed the quality of education can already be seen today, uh, as we use Blackboard and uh, you know online attendance uh, as professors use online online attendance. Um, the second justification was that machines, in order to become more advanced, need more great minds to emerge in industry to innovate and create better models. Uh, like stated before, uh, it is true that robotics and automation would create more high-skilled workers, although um, you know not everyone is suited for those jobs. Uh, in the supporting claim, it is stated. It is, also, it is also stated that robotics can be equivalent to more production, leading to more business, and uh, and that will emerge from greater production, uh, creating more jobs. Um, although production, an increase in production doesn't necessarily mean that there will be more jobs. Uh, and on a source found on a website called Technology and Review. Uh, Four years after World War II, an increase in jobs led to an increase in productivity. However, beginning in 2000, productivity, productivity began to rise robustly, although employment began to decline. Uh, by 2011, productivity remained high, but inversely, there was no parallel in job creation. So one of the great paradoxes of our generation uh, that we face is that although automation leads to more to higher productivity, uh, this doesn't. Uh, this also tends to lead to a falling median income and fewer jobs. An example can be shown in uh, in the agriculture industry, where in 1900, 40% uh, of Americans were employed through agriculture, uh, but in the 2000s, only 2% of Americans were employed through agriculture due to the cause of automation and robotics. The third justification was that one major fear behind this topic is that all jobs will disappear from the economy. This is hardly possible. To sum up the supporting claims, it is, it's a known fact that artificial intelligence is far from being perfected. Uh, that's what Michael claimed, that artificial intelligence will keep uh, higher skill jobs, although um, well, that's not really the big issue. The big issue is that uh, the jobs that, are, that require little to no skill are actually, they employ a huge percentage of the American people, uh, onwards to 40 to 50 percent. Um, so artificial intelligence is far from taking over high skilled jobs. However, uh, machines that require no artificial intelligence will be uh, will be the ones taking over the majority of jobs in America. So according to an article found on Ranker, uh, the most common jobs in America include salespeople, cashiers, and truck drivers. Uh, it is now very common for people to do, to do shopping online uh, instead of going to an actual storefront. Uh, and an article that on TechCrunch estimates that eight out of 10 people in America actually do their shopping online or participate in shopping online. Uh, truck truck and as far as truck drivers go, uh, they will be they will soon be out of the job 
due to driverless cars, which will be which will soon be released to the public on a mass scale. And um, and if, even if you go to like a grocery store or anything, you, you now have the option to check out yourself with the use of a machine. Um, so although not every job will be replaced, the ones that will be replaced, uh, they are going to affect the larger majority of Americans. And a source found on The Guardian, it estimates that 6% of jobs will be replaced by automation by, 20, by 2020. And on Daily Mail, they estimate 38% by 2030. And on another source called Arts Technica, 47% in the next two decades. All right, the structural stuff is pretty good at the beginning, although in the body of the speech, I'm not sure that it broke down quite the same way. Uh, the general challenge on improve is okay. It's a reasonable press to make. Uh, obviously, the argument seems to be fo focused on jobs, and that's the improvement that we're going to be talking about. You did have a nice counterclaim to begin with uh, that uh, suggests that uh, there are, you know, not everything is going to be uh, affected by this, you acknowledge that, uh, and then you challenge that there's no evidence that uh, robotics are going to improve education. I think that that's a reasonable press also. Um, the link between robotics and uh, increased educational activity is a thin one, and uh, you, you basically make the hasty generalization argument and challenge the lack of evidence on that particular point, and I think that's pretty good. There's also a point that you have in your argument that says a lot of people aren't going to be qualified for doing those kinds of things, and as harsh as it might be, I don't think that, that would be hard for you to prove. You know, in, in essence, you're saying, look, uh, education is going to solve the problem, well, let's look at our educational system. You know, how many people are graduating from high school without being able to read? How many people are graduating from high school and the first thing that they have to do when they get to college is to take a remedial math class? And the notion that uh, we're all going to just jump into the pool and be able to learn to work with robotics and fix these things seems to be uh, an awfully big assumption since we can't accomplish these other things. I think that you could have maybe made that argument a little bit more I, I, I hate to say brutally, but a little bit more directly with, with some evidence on that point. Um, the argument about, uh, let me see, uh, oh, and then you had a, a whole series of good statistical information suggesting how productivity has increased, well, the, um, you know, the uh, employment levels have decreased. Uh, that uh, jobs have remained stagnant. Well, we've uh, increased the number or increased the efficiency of the company. I thought that that of uh, the country. I thought that that was pretty effective. The example of agriculture was pretty reasonable. And then uh, you you go to basically those low skilled jobs that are available, and you mention what they are. That's a large percentage of the population. That was the one piece of information that I think you needed to provide. Also, you had a statistic there, 40 to 50 percent. <laughs> And I didn't get a source citation on that. Everything else you're giving us some sources on. And that was a pretty important component of your argument. That's kind of the premise that we have a large portion of the population that fits into this category. Uh, you know, they're the ones, the cashiers, the salespeople, the truck drivers. That's 40 to 50 percent of the economy. And those are the jobs that are probably going to go away, according to all of the stuff that you have at the end of the thing, at the end of the presentation. So I thought that those are pretty effective arguments there. All right, thank you.